I invite you to rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 21, beginning with verse 25, and that is found on page 87 of the New Testament portion of your pew Bible. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that these things, that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place. And to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So when we think about Advent, if we actually think about it at all, because most of us don't, but when we do, we usually think about getting ready for Christmas. And we think of cute little baby Jesus and the Christmas carols that we sing that are all about wise men and stars and mangers and all that cuteness. I mean, how many of us have already put up our Christmas trees and Christmas decorations and are willing to admit it? (laughs) See, I do that. That's my Black Friday thing. I don't shop. I put up Christmas stuff. (laughs) So because we, we do that because we're excited and we can't wait for Christmas and we wait with anticipation to celebrate Jesus' birth and to share presents with each other and share time with family and friends, right? But the first week of Advent, which is what you're in today, is a little different. We don't talk about cute little baby Jesus. We talk about Jesus' second coming. And we hear about distress among the nations and the roaring of the sea and people fainting from fear. Merry Christmas. (laughs) But really, Advent isn't only just about celebrating Jesus' birth. It's about what we do and how we live in between his birth and when he comes again. Not to worry about when he's coming again. No one knows that. Jesus even said he didn't know when he would come back. And anyone who claims to know is just trying to lead us astray. So keep that in mind. (laughs) But to live as Jesus' disciples now. To share Jesus' love and mercy and salvation. But most of all, hope. That's why we heard from the book of Jeremiah today. And just on the off chance that maybe you weren't fully focused on the Jeremiah reading, because, you know, sometimes I do that too, (laughs) I'm going to read a little bit for you again. So Jeremiah said, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. That he shall, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. See, Jeremiah is talking to a whole large group of people, both the nation of Judah and the nation of Israel, all Jewish people. But they had just lived through the devastation and the horror of the nation of Babylon coming in and conquering them, destroying the temple in Jerusalem, and taking many of those who survived, because not all of them survived the, the, the attack on Jerusalem, and those that survived were taken out of Jerusalem into Babylon to live in slavery and exile. And I want you to think about that for a minute, because the, 
they were taken out of their home and the temple was destroyed. And for the people, the Jewish people at that time, the temple was where God lived. And so the temple was destroyed, therefore God was destroyed and conquered. They, didn't, they felt like they didn't have God with them anymore. And then they were taken away from their homes, taken into this foreign land with people who spoke a different language and who worshipped other gods to live as slaves. They were, weren't sure if they would ever see their homes again or even if their children would ever be able to see their homes again. They'd lost everything. Jeremiah here is talking to people who have no hope. They're wondering what happened to God and where is God even in any of this? And has God abandoned them in their exile? But Jeremiah is here saying God has not abandoned you. God does remember his promise to be with you always. God says, I will send someone to you who will save you and bring justice and righteousness. We know that person to be Jesus, but they didn't know that. They had to just trust that God would do what he promised to do. Even in the midst of their misery and desperation and hopelessness, God is asking them to have hope in him. To not worry about what will happen or when it will happen, just to trust that it will happen because God promised it would. And to not be afraid of what is going on all around them to trust and hope in this new reality that God has promised, that God's righteousness will in fact prevail against the evil all around them. The Gospel of John says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The darkness will never overcome the light. And we as people of the light need to also prevail against the darkness around us too and put our trust and hope in Jesus, our light. That hope and that trust is also what the psalm was about this morning. It's all about putting our trust in God and leaning on him and learning from him. The psalm says, show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and in you I have trusted all the day long. One of the verses says, let none who look to you be put to shame. Another translation of that is, do not let those who wait on you be put to shame. The Hebrew word for look and wait can also be translated as hope. So let, do not let those who hope in you be put to shame. When we look to God and trust and wait and hope in him, we do that because we do know that God is our salvation and God is the only one that we can trust. We pray for God to lead us and guide us and teach us. And that's exactly what Jesus is trying to do here too, to lead and guide and teach us in what to do and who to be as we wait for him to return again. Jesus here is talking about all the signs that will happen so that we'll know when he'll come again. But I don't know about you, but to me it seems like those signs have been with us forever. There have been earthquakes and tsunamis and eclipses and wars and terror and disease and death since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve stepped out of the Garden of Eden. There have been times when I've thought, Lord, you know, today would be a really good day for you to come back. <laughs> There's so much suffering and fear in our world that it seems like all the signs are pointing that Jesus should come back today, right? But unfortunately, it's not up to us to tell God to send Jesus back. <laughs> We're not supposed to know when it's going to happen or even try to guess. We're supposed to wait and watch and hope. The signs that we're waiting and watching for are also not only just to point to when Jesus will return, they also point back to the Old Testament and the promises that God made to his people then. And the fact that God does fulfill his promises should also fill us with hope. 
God said he would send a savior. He sent Jesus. God does what he says he'll do. Jesus says he'll return, and so he will, because Jesus does what he says he's going to do. And we need to not worry about any of that or when it'll happen, because we can trust and hope in him because his promises are true. Jesus also said, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. I think many of us live as if Jesus isn't really going to come back at all. I mean, for me, it's been over 2,000 years. I mean, what are the chances that Jesus is going to come back in any of our lifetimes? Pretty slim, right? So I think a lot of us think, well, it's not going to happen anytime soon, so I can just keep doing what I'm doing, and I don't need to worry about it or think about it. Or, it seems like especially now, fear has us in its grip so badly that we can't see past it. But Jesus talks about that too. He says, people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world. Kind of sounds like today. But we, Jesus' disciples, are to stand up and raise our heads because our redemption is drawing near. The people that Jesus is talking about who are going to be full of fainting from fear are those people that are just living for themselves with no care or concern for anyone else. They're also the ones, I think, who are so paralyzed by fear over what's going on in the world that their fear turns into hate and blame. As if hating or blaming a whole group of people or a whole entire religion will somehow make everything right. Same, somehow make them feel better or safer. But of course it won't. Those are the people that Jesus is talking about who are the people of the world that will pass away. But we, who are people of the word, will not pass away. Because we know and trust God's promise of salvation and eternal life. We have hope that the rest of the world doesn't have. And I think, too, if you think about the people that Jeremiah was talking to, I have no doubt that some of those people that were taken away into exile were people of the world who trusted in the things and the people of the world to save them. But then there were people of the word who trusted God's promise. And those are the ones who were brought back to Jerusalem. They trusted God rather than the things of the world, even in the midst of the most horrible and difficult time in their life. So maybe a question for us would be, what is worth trusting through the most difficult times in our life? Or maybe who is worth trusting? Buildings can be destroyed, wars can happen, terrorists can make us afraid, earthquakes can happen, people we love get sick, we lose our jobs, families can even betray each other. But God always remains, and God's promise of his presence with us in the middle of all our suffering and fear, that's what gives me hope. So I try not to let the worries of this life weigh me down. But it's not always that easy, at least for me. <laughs> it's so hard sometimes to be awake and watchful and hopeful when it seems like the craziness of the world gets crazier every single day. And there's more anger and fear than ever. But Jesus doesn't want us to get stuck in our anger and fear, and he doesn't want us to let other people get stuck there either. Jesus calls us to let go of our fear and instead remember the hope that we have through our Savior Jesus, the light of the world. He is the only light shining in the darkness of our world, and he's the only one who can take away our fear. Just like the people that Jeremiah was talking to who were feeling hopeless, we're sometimes surrounded by hopelessness too. But just like them, we have the promise of God.
But actually, we have more than they did because we have Jesus. We have God's promised Savior, God's Son, who came to bring his light to our world of darkness, to drive away that darkness of fear and bring the light of hope. So anytime you're feeling afraid or angry because of all the things happening in the world, remember Jesus, your Savior. Remember that no darkness can ever overcome his light. And remember that we are all reflections of Jesus' light and hope for the world. Amen.